Alrighty, hello there students. So this is Mrs. Root, obviously, talking to you about our array list note packet. So we are going to continue um, on our notes for today. Uh, and this is uh, a continuation of what we were doing last week. So if we look through our array list notes, we've already gotten, we did this first page here. And then um, we talked about setting up the array list. We should have starred that we import the array list stuff. Again, I'm just going to hit a recap here of where we are. And then we have talked about the methods, the big methods, size, add, add, get, set, and remove. We looked at examples of adding things to the array list and printing the array list out. Ah. We looked at um, additional details. Over here, we added some new notes for unboxing and boxing, or auto boxing, I'm sorry, auto boxing and unboxing, unauto boxing, I guess. We didn't go through this example. Yes, if it's okay. We talked about traversing array lists, the three ways of printing, and we introduced this new for each loop for string S and breeds. So we did the for each loop. And then. We talked about adding items to an array list uh, where it adds at the end, adding them one at a time, changing size and changing throughout the loop. And this is where we want to start today to talk about um, changing the size and how you can, um, excuse me, how um, you can get into some trouble with an array list um, as you remove things. So talk here on the face of it iterating through an array list is like iterating through an array <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh pardon however if we start to real remove things on the array list we're going to run into trouble so let's say we have um, this list here of breeds and i'm going to draw a little um, list of it up here so let's say we have um, dalmatian comma boxer comma, uh, what else? All of a sudden, I can't think of them. Border Collie, and we'll add one more. Uh, German Shepherd. So here is our list of breeds. So what we're doing is, let's see what happens if we try to use a Fort Leach loop to modify an array list by removing items from it. So here's our original, and we have our positions, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to say for string S in breeds. So the first time through, S is going to be Dalmatian. And we could make a little table if we wanted to and keep track of what's going on. So maybe I'll pull over a little uh, you know, index card here and we can keep track. So I will call it iteration. So like number of times through the loop and S. So iteration I move my s over here so the first time through or i should say iteration let's we'll start with zero because we're in computer science so zero s is going to be dalmatian and our array after loop so after we remove is then going to be boxer border collie and german shepherd so now we have i'm going to write a boxer border collie German Shepherd. I'm going to shorten things up here. So now Boxer is at location zero, Border Collie is at location one, and German Shepherd is at location two. So Dalmatian has been removed. Well, that's all fine and dandy, um, but now like S is completely lost because we have run the program. Um, it compiled just fine, but now like S is S was supposed to be Dalmatian, then it's supposed to move to Boxer, and we're going to get an error called concurrent modification exception. So we are removing something from a list at the same, or from an array list, at the same time we are trying to go through that list. Um, in other words, S is now lost because the list is entirely changed. So we can't do this, okay? This is a no, no. Don't use the for each loop when you're trying to remove. If you want to do something like that, you would do this. 
So you're going to use, I got all crooked there, sorry folks. We're going to use the old fashioned for loop with the index. And we're going to say for i is zero, i is less than reads that size, i plus plus. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove at location i instead of removing the item that matches it. So remove at location i. So therefore, if we start off with our original idea here, and we have our uh, little loop that's list that's going to change, and maybe we'll do it right here. So we're going to keep track of i, and then our list after remove. So we start up at the top, i is 0. And after we remove, our list is going to be boxer, border collie. Again, I'll use BC for short, and German shepherd. And boxer is going to be at location 0. Border collie is going to be at location 1. And German shepherd's at location 2. In our list here, i is going to move up to 1. It still has and breeds that size. Notice size here is four now size is three at the start of that loop and i is one so that's all fine and dandy <laughs> this time through we're going to remove the border collie because that's at location one no we're probably not going to get the result that we would have thought we got um, but we'll hang on for that so now boxer is still at location zero german shepherd has moved over to location one <laughs> okay so now we go back around, i is 2, but size is now 2 because we only have two things in it. So now our loop is going to stop. So this i less than breeds.size, i is 2, that's false. So we're kind of at the end of our loop. It's going to terminate. Our intent with this may have been to remove everything. So notice we didn't get there because of how we dealt with um, the changing of the list and the changing of the size um, we didn't achieve our goal but we did remove every other item so i guess suppose that was helpful if that was what we wanted so then we come over to here and to actually remove everything from the list we're going to start at the end so we're going to set breeds to size minus one so the thing at the end we're going to say run it while it's greater than or equal to zero and we're going to go i minus minus so that's going to give us Removing from the end of the list, going back here, we're going to remove German Shepherd, then Border Collie, then Boxer, then Dalmatian, and then the list is going to terminate. So at the end of this, um, list will be empty. Empty. At end of loop. So that is how you could, if you wanted to take item by item out, um, go through your list. Noticing um, the choice of how you go through an array list will always depend on what you're attempting to do. Okay, again, if we don't want to modify the list, we just want to print or look at something, um, you can use the for each. If you want to change the array list by adding or removing items, you need to use the regular for loop, but you also want to be careful about making sure you know kind of where you are in that loop based off of the fact that the size is changing. All right, so traversing multiple array lists at one period in time. Um, here we're seeing like we've got an array list again of dog breeds and another one of dog breeds. And so what we're looking here is to say like, do we have, um, we're gonna look through the two lists and we're gonna say like, hey, if they're equal, then print out, you know, that they're at the same, uh, the same breed as in each list. For traversing two, we have two lists at the same time. You have to use the standard for loop because we need to get the, we need to get i on each of those lists, and we can't do that with the for each loop. So again, just something a little bit, bit different to think about. So when you're traversing multiple lists, just be careful to make sure they're the same size, or on one of those you're going to end up with an index out of bounds exception. So you want to kind of have this um, idea there same size or either you're going to ignore part of the list or end up with an error on it all righty and here they give you another example of traversing a list um, to check if um, using the for each loop to check if anything starts with a b so again we can do this because we're not modifying the list at the same time we're just going through it and looking at things 
The next lesson here we're going to talk about is tracing and writing methods using ArrayList as parameters and ArrayList as return types. Um, so when passing an ArrayList to a method, it's important to remember you're passing a reference. So this means there's only, we're not making a copy, not making a copy of the list. So there's only one list in existence, one list in memory, and we're going to just be accessing it in the same or in a different method. So no copy, any changes made in that method, there it says any changes made to the array list in the method are made to the original array list. So we have our example here, we start off with main, and then we have a mystery method here. So we say we create our array list of numbers, it contains integers, again I'm crooked, sorry guys. Um, we add numbers to the list, 20 of, or something like that, I don't know how many here some number of numbers there. We print it out, we call the mystery method, and then we print it out again. What happens here is that the in our memory of our computer program, we create the array list. Uh, it's called numbers. And it's pointed to here, and it's got some numbers in it. I suppose I could be exact and say like it's going to contain two. And uh, I got a headache now. 3 plus 2 is 5, uh, 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 2 is 10, so some numbers in there. So that's our numbers array list. And then we go down to here, when we call mystery, we pass in our array list, our array list numbers gets passed in. So to list here, it creates a reference which points at the exact same memory location. So no copy is made. It's still accessing this one memory location that our numbers array list is pointing to. And now our list parameter variable is pointing to that as well. Any modifications we do in here are going to be um, uh, changed in here. So we say, we look at every number in there. We say, hey, is it an even number? If so, we set it to 50. It seems like an odd thing to do, but anyway. So the 2 is going to be replaced with the 50. The 5 is not even, so it doesn't get replaced with 50. And the 10 gets replaced with 50. So despite the fact that seems like a weird thing to do, that's what we're doing. And then we come back up, and our numbers array, that has also changed. This reference will go array after this method ends. And the numbers have been changed. This numbers array list has been changed. OK. Returning array list works very similar to numbers. Remember, you're passing references when exchanging variable names. Again, same sort of thing. We're creating an array list. Here we've got an array list of trees, pine, oak, maple, spruce, coconut. Uh, we created our very nice list of knee trees here. Uh, we, oh, oh, we say, hey, I'm passing in my tree my trees list that has that stuff on it. And now we're saying, hey, I'm going to come through here. I'm going to return a new array list. So I've created a new array list over here. And I'm passing this down. I'm modifying it. And then I'm returning it here. Same sort of thing. Whatever we're doing in here is happening to this tree list up here, the list called trees. Even so even though I have a memory location, it's pointed to by trees. It's also going to be pointed to by new list. So they're going to access the same memory location, and these two things will be the same in the end. So that's all the note that these notes are going to cover for today. On uh, Later on, we're going to cover linear and binary search, and then we're going to go through the rest of the notes on our sorting routines.